Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell to you about all the things that are happening today and in the middle of the week in Missoula, Montana, on November the 8th. Wait, hold on. Just a, yes, it is November the 8th, 2017. I'm excited. I got a lot of stuff to talk about. Last night was the election. Um, I got a couple news items as well, and I got some weather. I got a stop motion video for you guys from our Saturday drop ins, uh, just mostly to promote it, blah, blah, blah. And I got some events, news, new programs, and a brand new art clip for you guys. But let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. Currently, it is 25 degrees outside. Um, this week is supposed to be pretty frigid, but not too bad, you know, like last week it was pretty cold but and pretty snowy, uh, this week most of the snow is kind of cleared up, maybe see some residual snow on the ground, but for the most part it's kind of um, out of the way. Um, you could expect your highs to be 38 degrees today, your lows in 29, you have that slight chance of snow. Thursday, you're going to have a wintry mix with some of that showers likely. You might even see some of that freezing rain because it's getting to those low temperatures below freezing as well. So Thursday night, you can expect a 80% chance of showers happening all day, um, all night, I mean. Um, Friday, you have a 50% chance of rain. Uh, Friday night is still 50%. So Veterans Day, you can expect uh, that day to be... Uh, 30% chances of rain and snow. So pretty much staying within the high 30s, low uh, low 40s. Um, your lows are going to be uh, pretty much the high 20s. So it's not going to be so bad, but it is uh, it, it it is an interesting transition into the colder months as we get into the November time. So let's talk about some news items, starting with this camera. Hi, how's it going? Uh, so there was an election here in Missoula County. Um, and the city of Missoula uh, voted in about five new ward members in the uh, in the six wards that Missoula has. So, so we're going to be seeing a whole lot of new faces in the uh, 12 city council ward members. Um, five of them are brand new. So Mirtha Basara will be replace Ruth Swaney's spot when once Ruth Swaney um, basically stepped down from her spot in Ward 2. Brian Von Losberg uh, retained his seat, but of course he ran unopposed, so he didn't have to worry about that whatsoever. Um, Ward 3, Heather Harp will replace Emily Bentley, who did not run for re-election this year. Jesse Ramos, um, Ward 4 was one of the uh, biggest contested wards this year. Um, Jesse Ramos will replace John Wilkins in Ward 4. He had 1,645 of the votes. Um, Ward 5, Stacey Anderson will replace Annalise Hedall, who didn't run this year. Uh, Julie uh, Mer Merritt will replace Marilyn Marler, who uh, chose not to run this time. And then, of course, yeah, five new city council members. Um, Brian Von Lossberg is pretty much going to be the only one returning on that side. There's usually two uh, ward members per uh, ward district. So just to kind of uh, make sure that there's always somebody in a ward seat at, in, at all times. Um, ward 2 is a whole other issue. Um, uh, judge Catherine uh, Jenks was voted as judge in Missoula. And uh, Mayor John Egan uh, retains his status as mayor against Lisa Tripke uh, with uh, 12,700 votes to 8,941. 8, and, of course, in this election, 22,051 votes were cast in this past election. So that's kind of uh, what, uh, what, what happened uh, during this election. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to find out more information and you want to find out more of the votes, you just go to uh, the city's website, ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful website where you can find all your information and, oh, wait, wait, there it is. This is the website. Yeah, sorry, I'm just like slowly getting over a cold, so I, I'll just bear with me. So uh, ci.missoula.mt.us is the website to go to if you want to find out any of that. But, of course, you can go always go to missoulavotes.com to find out all your election results and more as well. So let's move on to some um, state news items. Montana has been known to have uh, having a very conservative state legislature. So conservative uh, that so conservative that they usually meet every two years, discuss a two year budget. Um, Governor Steve Bull called for a special session in the wake of one of the most expensive fire seasons in Montana history, reaching two hundred and twenty eight million dollars of state revenue. Bulk's pitch to lawmakers splits the shortfall into thirds and calls for raising $75.1 million from temporary tax increases and another 
$5 million from fund transfers and other legislation. The final third of potential solutions will be bulk and post cuts targeting most state agencies totaling $76.6 million. The Department of Corrections and state university systems are among that will be cut. Cuts to the uh, Department of Public Health and Human Services budgeted will be cut by 4.7% or $49.2 million. That's less than half of the $105 million in state general fund um, reductions that were proposed in October. That even includes the Department of Corrections, which will see a 1.1% uh, cut or about $4.4 million. And the university system will now see $4.5 million in reduction aside from the, them already seeing $44 million beforehand. Um, the bigger department, uh, the bigger departments will face smaller cuts, while some of the smaller departments are seeing upwards of 10 to even 15 percent of their budget cuts. Programs that have been on the chopping block for the earlier cuts, such as childhood intervention for children zero to three, uh, who uh, are behind in meeting developmental uh, benchmarks, were spared, but uh, corresponding programs for youth between three and 21 will be eliminated. The session will uh, convene Monday with committee hearings on the proposals followed by a whole legislature meeting Tuesday. Bulk's office said that hopefully the session could adjourn by Wednesday or Thursday, uh, but most of the uh, um, conservative Republicans, uh, spe the Speaker of the House, that was is not so uh, confident that the meeting will be done by the end of that week. Helena, this is from the Helena Independent Rec Records uh, article by Holly Michaels. So let's move on some, to some national news. Uh, the World Health Organization worried about the increasing epidemic of drug-resistant infections has thrown a co the, its considerable weight behind the campaign to cut the use of antibiotics in pigs, chickens, and cattle that are raised for their meat. The WHO as they're called, is calling on government to follow the example of Denmark and Netherlands, which have been banned all use of these drugs to make animals grow faster or simply protect healthy animals from getting sick. According to these guidelines, antibiotics cannot be used to uh, promote faster growth or merely to prevent disease in healthy animals. Many of the ranchers of, of the National Pork Producers Council are skeptical because they uh, feel as though that if they can't use antibiotics, they can't save animals and also prevent the spread of diseases among the animals without killing their animals and just basically uh, getting rid of their corpses. Um, so, on the other hand, uh, condemned the WHO's uh, proposal to the ban of the use of drugs prevention and stop using drugs are most critical for human health. According to NPPC, uh, the National Pork Producers Council, such a ban is uh, uh, anti- uh, Anti, uh, basically, it basically says that it's not good for pork farmers and veterinarians, uh, more obligations to care for the pigs. Uh, diseases, I mean, basically, diseases are organic, too, if you think about it. But you should also make, you, but you should also make farmers and ranchers cut uh, corners when it comes to producing healthy livestock and crops. But, of course, this is just my opinion. But then again, ranchers are forced to compete. Um, and unhealthy uh, cattle usually spoil a lot, and no cattle spoils the rep of a farmer. So the whole idea is that um, if you, you know, like if you uh, sell the bigger cattle, you have a chance, better chance of selling the cattle because they have to re reach a certain industry standards. But then again, if you uh, if you don't use certain antibiotics to prevent diseases, and you sell a diseased cow to a company for pork products, you could uh, potentially um, run the risk of uh, selling um, tainted meat in a way. So just kind of think about that. There's there's a, there's an interesting line that people are going to be walking along. But that's some of the news that are happening in the state, um, city on the city, state, and national level. Um, yeah, I mean, let's move on. I got some new programming for you guys. Uh, it is one of the last Look Before You Speak programs that I did with Steve Glukert, and it is from the Four Ravens Gallery. But other than that, there's a whole bunch of other new programs which talks about the history of Fort Missoula and more. So I've noticed that there's a real broad variety of work in here, everything from watercolors and photographs, ceramics, glassworks, uh, there's a real variety, and some of it rooted in craft, but yet fine art. And uh, that's kind of unique about the language here in this gallery. Yes, fine art uh -huh. Con and contemporary. Let's go this way, and we're going to focus on some something that's absolutely exquisite. As Steve and I stand here, we should be able to smell a bit of the forest. Mm -hmm. Because as you look and look up a little closer, there are baskets 
and their baskets made of pine needles, so ex and um, woven with a little linen thread. Judy makes these baskets. Each one, each one of them has a design in the middle, and each basket comes with its own story. So, if they're in the same community, what happens? Yeah, fell definitely faster, right? And then we, you guys did a great job. Then we have a kid, and I don't really love this part of the activity, but I think this is the kid that people think of most often when we talk about substance use, that probably, you know, doesn't have all the great things going on that a kid deserves in a childhood. What's going to happen? So when we say it's those kids, and it would never be my kid, well, how, what do we think about that? stories um, of Italians that have gotten uh, passed along about hiding in the back of a truck um, and being found at the train station and the story goes that once they got caught at the train station they begged the police officers not to take them back to the fort because at the fort there was a um, both the Italians and the Japanese were able to create their own self-government here. So, and most of the Italians had been on ships, so they already had the hierarchy going. So those particular Italians didn't want to come back here because they felt like it would be worse to be punished by um, the, the Italian self-government in Fort Missoula than by the actual police. Um, as far as I know, we don't know of any stories of any Japanese folks um, trying to escape from here. Um, Bob will talk a bit more about the, the folks that were here, but we're, we're talking mainly average age of 60, um, upstanding citizens, probably not, not ones, ones who would probably prefer to go through whatever they needed to do to do it the right way. And so we see a pattern of new technical, te technical devices, and tanks and aircraft particularly, that are introduced, replaced by new, replaced by new versions, but no decisive no decisive change. So technologically, again, the flexibility of desperation. Armed forces, armed forces also adjust institutionally. They adjust institutionally to the challenges of stagnation, the gridlock, trench warfare. Cavalry are turned into infantry. Flash and sound raising and air observation revolutionizes artillery fire direction and the nature of artillerymen. Gunners who before the First World War had been as horse obsessed as the cavalry are now morphing into scientists and mathematicians by 1918. Our artillery and air assets are, are centralized or decentralized. You know, the, again, the administration, the organization changes depending on the perceived need. And that was some of the new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. This next couple days um, so if you want to find out more information you can go on to our MCAT website MCAT.org Missoula's Community Media Resource it is a resource for people in the community who want to make their own videos or have MCAT go out and help you produce your own videos but also it is an educational public and government uh, station here in the city of Missoula that helps promote Missoula if you want more information about me um, a little uh, self-plugging it. You can find me on wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. All you got to do is Google Wake Up Missoula, and you can find me on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, all that wonderful, wonderful stuff about Wake Up Missoula. And why not Wake Up Missoula? Because you're waking up with this. I'm not really selling it. Anyways, uh, let's talk about some city council stuff. So, um... In the city council, they talked about a couple of things here and there. They talked about the Office of Housing and um, uh, Community Development. They talked about the Cowboy Flats development, which is going to be the uh, Southgate um, Triangle. So they talked about developing that and some of the issues that they come across. But the first thing that happened was there was a single public comment from uh, Ward 4 uh, City Council member, future City Council Ward 4 member, Jesse Ramos, um, critiquing um, the city of Missoula for, um, I guess... Uh, unfair practice so the first thing I want to address is something that you guys I thought put to bed um, three or four weeks ago when you voted that the city was not going to be uh, competing with the monuments but I've spoken to some of the folks in the private sector and the city cemetery has come out with a very strict deadline as to when these stones can be set 
So strict, in fact, that it's nearly impossible, it is impossible for the private sector to compete at all. So there is now a 20-day restriction as to when the stones have to be placed at the city cemetery. And it takes about four to five weeks for these stones to even get here. So that makes it impossible for the private sector to compete. So is the city cemetery using their bureaucratic power to push out the private sector? And next, taxes came out this week, and I am absolutely shocked that taxes went up this year because, Mr. Mayor, you said that they were going down. And according to a Missoulian article with the headline saying that taxes are going down, I believed it. And All right, so that was uh, Jesse Ramos talking about uh, taxes and the C Missoula City Cemetery. Um, in response to that um, comment earlier, John Wilkins uh, quoted in saying that most of the uh, tax hikes on the uh, on your taxes is because uh, the people uh, voted for certain bonds that uh, have been passed in the last uh, four years or so. So just letting you guys know that those the taxes high is because of that and not because of the standard city taxes as well, according to John Wilkins. Um, the Office of Housing and Community Development, uh, HCP, applied for a housing and health care plan a grant through the Montana Health Care Foundation in August 2017. Uh, they applied for this grant in partnership with St. Patrick Hospital to lead community-wide plan efforts aimed at uh, identifying supportive, so, uh, supportive housing solutions for Missoula's most chronically homeless ho hospitalized uh, utilizers, and MHCF awarded the grant to the city of Missoula on October 4, 2017, uh, totaling 59600 uh, so, uh, sorry, $59,760, and they voted in, in favor of this public hearing to expand um, certain budgets within the city of Missoula so they can pay for this. Uh, Cowboy Flats is another big thing that was happening inside the city of Missoula. Um, they're talking about how they're going to do construction and how they're going to be building basically the throughway on 38th Street. Um, many of the things that they wanted to do, is, one, of, one of the bigger problems that are happening with the Cowboy Flats is uh, most uh, some critics... Uh, some critical thoughts in terms of a lot of infill because that seems to be a very popular um, thing that's happening within the city limits is that there's a lot of high density housing being built so Cowboy Flats is a subdivision that is a building of high density and it's 32 a lot major subdivision of 4.99 acre parcel in Dory Lane in the Southgate Triangle neighborhood council area the property is zoned R. 5.4, which has the minimum size of 40, 50, uh, 5,400 square feet. All lots meet or exceed the minimum lot size. The 2035 R. Missoula Growth Policy recommends a land use design of residential medium, 3 to 11 dwelling units per aching, per, per aching, no sorry, so per acre. The density of the subdivision is uh, 6.4 dwelling units per acre to uh, um, in compliance with the growth policy. And here is Marilyn Marler uh, talking about infill. Um, I, it would be my personal preference, if it were legally possible, that somehow this would be um, actually twice the, twice the number of houses on smaller lots so they might be more affordable. But this is a private developer, private business, private builder um, who owns this property and we don't, get, we don't have any legal basis to tell them what kind of houses to build. They're going to build what they, their research and experience shows that the market will buy, and that's their right to do that. If we had some kind of council policies to make, um, to allow for a really different zoning or to make it, you know, big incentive for them to build smaller, more affordable houses, they may have chosen that option, but they're choosing to build something for, for there's a reason why they're doing this kind. Of, of thing. Um, again, if, if, it, if it was my druthers, um, it would be a lot, it would be a different project. But I, I'm having said that, I'm confident it's going to be a nice project. And my colleague over here has voiced the, a, another valid opinion that it, people in the neighborhood don't want to see something totally different and disruptive. All right. So that was uh, Marilyn Marler. And um, it, many of the things that the city council proposed, um, John Debari uh, also proposed that he wanted to amend a, a motion to actually not when this is being done as it's in, in correlation with the uh, development of this uh, of Dory Lane is that they wanted to basically connect 38th Street in a phase of one. So the whole idea is that um, they wanted the uh, uh, contracting group to build the road that will basically go from Reserve Street. Another, basically, another street that goes from Reserve Street all the way through the uh, uh, Southgate Triangle, you, you know, the Southgate Mall area, all that stuff. Um, 
and they would think they, they and, the, and the city is confident that maybe the contracting group can do it within phase one of their construction. But unfortunately, Gene Mostad, contracted by MRA, um, talks about not being able to do something like this in a parallel with the Cow Cow Cowboy Flats um, depart development, and this is why. When you're a developer, the reason that you do phasing is an economic reason. And so <laughs> you want the flexibility in, in uh, being able to make a decision so that you don't put yourself in a predicament of um, going broke. And so uh, when a governmental body puts you in a position where you can't make that decision, it's not a very um, comfortable situation. All right, so that was uh, Gene Mosted um, talking about how, uh, like, based on the ec economy, ec economy, and of course, he be, him being around in his business in 2009, how he kind of struggled with contracting during that time during the recession. So, the, of course, the, the city did uh, vote against this new motion to complete the road in phase one, uh, along with Cowboy Flats. So they moved forward in attempt um, to uh, basically. Uh, keep it as it is so to keep it kind of separated but cowboy flats when they develop you know phase one will be complete within the road but then it will be moved on to phase two and so on and so forth to make this road a possibility when developing the southgate triangle and the dory lane areas so um moving on i do have one last thing i do want to mention as well is that uh if you haven't heard or you um that, that linda vista boulevard uh, drawn some new bike lanes uh, back in the day, but one of the problems that they came that came across is that uh, people would park um, right on the bike lanes, right next to park access in the lower Linda Vista area, Linda Vista Bo Boulevard areas. Um, so basically, it was kind of like a lawless um, bike lane. So they, um, and police had no teeth to basically hand out tickets. So one of the things that they were suggested by Ben Wise, who is the uh, bike guy here in Missoula, uh, there were there was a presentation, and it was pretty short. There wasn't much discussed, but the uh, basically the idea was clear that they want to make sure that um, that the police have the power to you know, hand out tickets to people who do park on bike lanes, but of course they have to have uh, the ability to provide, uh, they have to have a certain road standards to these bike lanes. They, you can't just draw a bike lane and just be like, you can't drive on the bike lane. That's not how it works. They have to have a certain uh, distance away from the road for pedestrians and sidewalks and stuff like that. So that's what they're working on now. And then this ordinance will move forward as well. And um, also Monday night is when they filled uh, Ruth Sweeney's Ward 2 seat by uh, Mirtha Bercera, who works for the city under the who worked for the city uh, and retired back in 2013 in the guise of city planning and grants, which is now known as developmental services. But it was a long meeting. They spent a good deal of time on the Cowboy Flats talking about this, um, and basically they they spent a lot of time talking about something that they weren't going to do. So I wanted to kind of get through that as soon as as fast as possible. But that's kind of what they were talking about. Of course, you can watch this full meeting by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. It's a, such a nice website to find more information about your city and find out who is all your new ward members. Meet your new ward members. There's, a, there's five new city ward members representing your neighborhoods. So get to know them by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. But we have a brand new art clip for you guys. It is from the Clay Studio of Missoula. And it's going to end in December. So here is... Let me see. Just double check. Uh, art school faculty ex exhibition. Oh, it's the it's at the gallery of the visual arts. My bad. It's not at the clay studio. But there are some um, clay and there's some potted um, pots. So without further ado, here is the gallery of the visual arts um, at the University of Montana in the Social Science Building.
Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for some um, what is happening in the city of Missoula with uh, Missoula events. So let's start things off. Uh, if, if you have a kid um, who is between the ages of walking to 12 years of age, Mismo, uh, Bitterroot Gymnastics, and uh, Roots Acro Sports Center Oh, Roots, Mismo, and the Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, they all are starting this morning. It's a good way for kids to stay active, but also stay warm within the in, in the confines of a building. Because a lot of times, out, outdoor activity is starts to become more and more limited as the weather gets colder and colder. Uh, but of course, there's always those winter activities as well later on. But if you just want a quick and easy way just to drive across town, Mismo... Missoula Indoor Sports Arena and Roots all start this morning. Um, Tiny Tales in Empo at Empower Place. Uh, this is uh, a new thing that the uh, Missoula, uh, Missoula Public Library is doing with the Missoula Food Bank. So they take the kids um, down and tell stories and rhymes, enjoy some open reading, socializing time during Tiny Tales at Empower Place, which is located at the Missoula Food Bank at 1720 Wyoming Street. So they kind of moved it over to just uh, across the river, but it's a, it's a nice continuation of Tiny Tales, which teaches young kids uh, books and how to read. Um, uh, sticker stacking is at Family Church Children's Museum. It's basically what it sounds like. So that happens from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Science Sprouts, Amazing Ears. Uh, one to f uh, five-year-olds can enjoy some engage in activities on amazing ears. Uh, Craigslist, Missoula Public Library, is going to be teaching people how to use this popular classified ad website and search for listings related to jobs, housing, items for sale, and discuss them, discussion forums. The class will cover how to post your own advertisement. Registration is required by calling 721-BOOK, otherwise known as 721-2665. And that's happening from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. in the computer classroom. But of course, it's not as uh, popular as since Facebook is basically kind of taking um, uh, note by doing their own little Craigslist within Facebook as well. So you might want to um, keep up with that. Uh, so NAMI Crafts, um, free weekly art and crafts group for adults who are recovering from um, mental illnesses. Um, no registration is required. All materials are supplied, and it's happening at 2 p.m. at the NAMI Missoula. Uh, middle School Writers Group is going to be at the Missoula Public Library. Improve your writing skills for uh, any uh, kids who are in grades 6 to 9, and y they can enjoy some writing and talk about uh, critiquing, and this is from 3.30 to 5 p.m., and they, uh, get a eat a get a they get to eat a little chocolate along the way as well. Effective communication strategies for caregivers. Missoula Public Library is hosting an event tonight from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Individuals living with a dementia or experiencing changes in behavior that can be confusing to friends and family. This is a 1.5, which is a an hour and a half workshop for caregivers who wish to learn how to de decode messages through attitude, tone of voice, facial expressions, and body language. So as they, as people get older, a lot of times um, they have trouble communicating. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm having trouble communicating right now. Uh, so glass fusing orientation class, moving on. Um, is happening at Zootown Arts Community Center. They do glass fusing. It is a beautiful way to uh, make uh, glass art and glass uh, uh, sculptures and whatnot like that to have fun with the added bonus and learning new skills. Uh, students will learn all the basics from how to uh, the kilning, kiln, kiln, kilning process works to design slumping fusing mold use glass aftercare and to be oriented to the tools and glass available in the glass fusing studio. And, yeah, that's happening from 6 p.m. And, of course, once you go through orientation, you can pretty much go there anytime. It's available and basically make and create. Uh, Aaron Perret, uh, Maple and Lead, making a letterpress book. is going to be at Shakespeare and Company. And it's basically Aaron Perret is a musician and writer from Helena. His books include Montana Then and Now, Literary Butte, and Montana Amer Americana Music. In, the two in 2015, he, found, he founded, along with Peter Koch, um, the t uh, tutorial press devoted to uh, fine letterpress editions and broadsides of Montana authors. Uh, his latest books is Maple and Lead, a coalition of f uh, fiction printed letterpress and illustrated with woodcuts by Seth Taylor Roby. And of course, he'll be there, uh, Shakespeare and Company, at 7 p.m. tonight. Uh, second Wednesday book group is going to be at the Missoula Public Library. So if you're in a book group or wish to be in a book group, uh, every second Wednesday of the month, Missoula Public Library hosts a book club at Missoula Public Library at 7 p.m. 
So that concludes everything that are happening on your Wednesday night events. Um, here are some of your late night Wednesday nights events. If you're interested in trivia, um, starting at 7.30 p.m., Broadway Bar and Grill will be doing trivia night. Um, they're doing a trivia beer suit at the press box uh, tonight as well, starting at 8.30. Missoula Open Deck Society DJ Party will be at VFW starting at 8. Karaoke is going to be at Eagles Lodge, Badlander, and the Sunrise Saloon for all your karaoke fixins. So uh, here is a, another art clip, um, and this is from the Missoula Art Museum, and this is Dear Audience. Now let's talk about all your Thursday events that are happening inside the city of Missoula. Starting a Thursday morning at the Missoula Food Bank, Miz Memories in the Making. From 6.30, from 9.30 to 3 p.m., the workshop focuses on the use of art and the means for those with Alzheimer's and other dementia to express feelings and relate relate stories about their lives. It is designed for aging services providers, caregivers, family members, volunteers, and students. You can register at memoriesmaking at dot eventbrite.com um, story garden the dot is going to be at family first children's museum join as they glow with gr glow god i'm awful today but grow with books this week's selection the dot a story about a girl who says she cannot draw but suddenly discovers through the magic of a simple dot she is indeed an artist um, follow the story. There will be a fun kids activity afterwards as well. General Cancer Support Group starting at noon tomorrow is that going to be at St. Patrick Hospital. So the support group meets every Thursday, every second Thursday of the month from 12 to 1:30 p.m. And uh, the group, this group, is open to those in all phases of testing, treatment, and follow-up for cancer. Families and friends are welcomed as well. Mouth. Parts and Microscopes is going to be at the Missoula Insectariums, and you get to learn about how insects, uh, where their mouths are, and how they work. And they get to talk all different types of mouth parts through anthropods have. Um, Breaking the Ice is going to be at Free Cycles Missoula. It's called Break the Ice. Come to Free Cycles to learn what you need to know about bicycles through the winter. Talk to other people who ride their bikes year-round and to find out the best tips for extra cold, snowy, and ice days. There will also be a group effort spending time pre pre prepping the Free Cycles Community Bike Shop for winter and weatherizing the building. So they have Pollock Style Bring a Dish to Share, and it's hosted by uh, the local um, Indigenous Network Collective, L-I-N-C, and Montana Conservation Voters. So you can check that out. It's uh, going to start at 5 p.m. tomorrow night. So uh, then you got Supercharge Your Goals five-point formula for success at the University of Montana at 5.30. Oh God, why do I keep on mis saying anything? Uh, starting at 5.30 p.m. University of Montana, join Sophia as she walks through your pro uh, process of identifying your life's goals and dreams and learn the five-point formula for success and fulfillment. Um, so basically, that's what they're going to be talking about. It's going to be at the Continuing Education Center in room 203, Missoula, Montana, if you're looking into supercharging your goals and just having another uh, way of 
um, succeeding. So it's just another way of finding a formula for success for you. It might not be for you, but you can maybe find some kind of inspiration out of it as well. And it's happening at 530 at the University of Montana Continuing Education Conference Room 203. Book club, um, another book club for people who uh, want to go to the Missouri Art Museum. So this is new. Missouri Art Museum is hosting a book club um, event Earlings, uh, Earlings, a recent appointment as Director of Creative Writing at the University of Montana, where she teaches fiction and Native American studies, and the exhibi exhibition, Juan Quick to See Smith in the Footsteps of My Ancestors. So they're talking about Perma Red by Deborah Magpie Earling. So the times are starting at 6 p.m. tomorrow night at the Missoula Art Museum. Of Monarchs and Milkweed, the Wilma is hosting a Natural History Center uh, and Missoula Secretarium for a fascinating dive into biology and evolution of one of nature's most beloved and fascinating creatures. Dr. Uh, Anurang Agrawal, professor of biology and etymology at Cornell University, will talk about the monarch butterfly known as their bright colors and epic annual migration from the United States to uh, Canada to Mexico. Um, yet there is so much more to the monarch than its distinctive uh, presence and a mythic journeying. So the whole idea is that um, a lot of times uh, butterflies and monarchs, they travel long distances just so they can mate and die. That's basically how it works. So it's a lot of uh, these bugs and insects, they uh, do so much just so they can mate and then they basically die soon after. So it's, it's kind of crazy just to think about. And it's uh, very interesting to learn about as well because there's so um, many of them around. Um, so let's talk about some late night events happening for your Thursday night. Some more trivia night at the Dark Horse uh, tomorrow night. Um, you got live jazz at the Plonk. You got Lolo Creek Band at the Sunrise Saloon. It's going to be some country music. Uh, no cover downtown dance party is going to be at the VFW. So VFW knows how to dance apparently. Uh, <laughs> Rocky Karaoke by uh, Aaron B. Rock is going to be at Dark Horse. And then uh, the dip is going to be at the Wilma. It's going to be rock music. Um, miscellaneous stuff as well. So if you're interested in the Monarch Butterfly, but then you want to stick around for some music, stick around at the Wilma, go to the dip, that kind of thing. So that's kind of everything you need to know what's happening in terms of Missoula events. Um, if you want more information, you go to MissoulaEvents.net. It is a wonderful website for anybody looking to see what is up in Missoula and what you can do here in Missoula. Um, but good luck trying to find something um, going on basically between like two and five. Two and five is always a kind of a dead spot for a lot of things to do. Usually around that time, people are usually kind of unwinding from work day or just kind of are already done with the day. So just uh, think about that and um, go to MizzoEvents.net for more information. I have a new stop motion video for you guys, so I'm going to uh, send you off on that. Um, so for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp, and here is a stop motion video of a week. Um, I'm not saying the week because then that means I have to do another one next week. So without further ado, here is stop motion video of the week. You can find all these stuff and my show by looking up Wake Up Missoula on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So thanks for joining me and I hope you have a wonderful day. Well, yeah, it just, you know, it just still itches. It's just really weird. Yeah, it's I good. know what you mean. Use aloe vera. Huh? Oh, thank you. I was waiting for that. No problem. I know you've been looking for a battering. Yeah, just uh, place it right there. Uh, two items. I think my Not collection is... Sir, you can't be here. Hey, what's going on? Songs in the music. Now, just what is going on here? Well, this doesn't involve me. I'll see you later. Uh, oh. I'm going to make this clear. It belongs in the museum. I don't need to listen to this. You need to get out of my collection. This is my collection. I paid for this. Hiya! Uh. It belongs in the museum. Do you really think a batarang belongs in... Sir, you need to leave. Uh. Armor shelf museum. Well, I got my katana, and I'm about to use it on you. Uh. Uh. Oh, I guess that doesn't belong anywhere anymore. I don't need weapons to defeat you. Everything belongs in a museum. <laughs> <laughs> museum, museum. I a museum, museum. What was that? I wasn't listening. Museum. <laughs> oh, man.